So what do I do? I'm Anna Quartucci. I'm the president of Tata Association. Uh, it's an association that takes care of accessibility and uh, well, accessibility of uh, services for all. So as you can see, the title is Accessible and Sustainable Events for All. So I think it will be useful and important to explain who is this uh, everybody. Who are we talking to? So often, of course, clearly we are talking, first of all, of uh, disabilities. The most common ones and the ones that we are all aware of. So psychic disabilities and uh, physical ones all those that are more easily uh, definable as a disability and is part of our uh, target customers. Many of the disabilities and the special needs we want to talk about are hidden disabilities, invisible disabilities that are not so recognizable. Here you can see uh, just an example. These are disabilities uh, related with uh, diseases that can be, for example, Crohn's disease or dyslexia or uh, simple intolerances. And very often other disabilities could be also only temporary disabilities. An example above all could be a person has an accident. Uh, maybe he's uh, a broken a limb, and uh, this doesn't uh, impede him from uh, having a normal life or taking part to work events or or uh, performing normal activities. But during that period, he will be temporary, uh, be a person with a special needs, so a disability, even if only temporary. So to, uh, to close this uh, list of people with special needs and disabilities, I will list um, something that often is ignored, which is the elderly people, each one of us in a certain phase of our life, we will enter uh, a phase where our needs will change and we will probably need support and services that are adapted to our new needs. Um, all, those, all the things that are related with food intolerances and uh, celiac disease, which is a, an actual disease and always more often is being um, is present in our lives uh, maybe not at birth but in our society uh, probably lifestyles and uh, what we eat are causing uh, diffusion of this disease which is very hidden because it's not easy to recognize but it's very uh, dangerous because a person that has uh, celiac disease if he comes into contact with uh, with food that's been that has only a very very small part of what happened of wheat for example could have a uh, shock uh, and um, it's a hard it's a difficult and dangerous disease to manage and always talking about people with special needs there's people which for religious reasons and have lifestyles, uh, specific lifestyles uh, regarding uh, food. So it's important that when we are organizing an event or when we try to support a worker inside a company, when we have to live with a person that has these kind of needs, we need to be aware of these needs because there is a very well-defined specific characteristic regarding the food that these people may or may not eat. So as you can see, uh, the potential people that are interested by this special attention is really very, very uh, wide. And I think that each one of us can, in a certain point of our lives, could be part of this uh, group. So what are we doing in this project and where are we starting from, most of all? This is a project called the Transformers project. Its origins are in the Open Corporation project, and that's where we started with field camps to ask ourselves and to, let's say, deal with this challenge, which is organizing events and encounters. And uh, 
well, moments where uh, their work activities, we wanted to consider and organize these events in a way that they are uh, for everybody. So why am I showing you this page, this open corporation page? Because all the documents we refer to in the Transformers project are already present in the open corporation project. This is the, let's say, the first page you'll see when you open, when you click on the, the accessibility section in the website. And what will you see? You'll see, well, this uh, heading, checklist meetings. What uh, what's our intention with? I mean, when we uh, publish these documents, well, first of all, we're giving you a checklist, well, a series of checklists, thanks to which you can uh, control from an organizational point of view and a final service point of view. You can control what has to be done. So it actually takes you by the hand because the, the topic is pretty uh, complex and, uh, and wide. So this is a practical help on how to organize uh, accessible events for all. Clearly, this has to be supported by uh, certain knowledge, information, and news. Where can we find these news? How? Must we do this? We have a manual, a handbook for organizing. And uh, in this handbook, you'll find both uh, theory and practice on, the, on how to organize an event and also other information. So it's clear that before looking at the checklist, you should uh, train yourself and uh, say, uh, be aware and have knowledge, be prepared on the topics. And you can reach this awareness and this knowledge by reading the handbook. Just a moment. The other document that's present in this page is the enrollment form which is a tool that we use when we have to organize some kind of event. How can we gather all the, uh, for example, uh, registrations for a meeting such as this? Who takes care of the organization? We'll send an enrollment form. And uh, within this form, uh, it is important that we already start including the description of uh, potential special needs because who is organizing the event must uh, be clearly aware of who are the people that have to take part to the event and what has to be done for them and all this as you can see by the description I have just uh, given to you is a very dynamic organization it's a very uh, wide organization of course, you have to. All actors must take into account, and all subjects must take into account. This, all the suppliers of services must take into account these uh, specific characteristics. This is an example. You can see this picture does not represent specifically what an event could be. It is just an example, or a multinational company that's involved in our observatory. But at least you can understand the complexity of the people and subjects that are involved in this kind of organization. All the uh, subjects that are offering services of whatever nature should be able to offer the same tools and services so that all services are, from uh, start to, to the end of the meeting, are in line with what we have just said. So as I already said, this concerns events, and workshops, and um, everything that can be organized, uh, and that includes the presence of many people. And last but not least, we often ignore these training courses. Because in this project specifically, but more in general also, when you have training courses which uh, 
where we uh, give information to uh, to workers or to the people attending to the course, I believe that we should include the topics of accessibility and the topics we're talking about right now as a uh, an actual topic of the training course because I'll repeat myself, the information that one has to acquire is really, uh, uh, there's a lot of information and notions that must be uh, acquired and that are necessary to understand how to face these uh, challenges and topics. So if you don't do this, you risk uh, having an incomplete uh, picture. So I apologize, Gabriele, could you go back one slide? As you can see there, there's a slide. Uh, if you click on that, you will... Uh, you'll open the static pages we've just seen but certainly we mu you must refer to that link because you will find all the information and documents on the Open Corporation project so here what I want to show to you is a um, summary of what we called ASI Accessibility Sustainability Index where we take in consideration a series of parameters. Uh, I repeat, this is just a summary a, of the parameters that we take in consideration. I'm talking about people with disabilities. I talked about different kinds of special needs and disabilities, but the topic that we uh, are trying to assess here is also sustainability. And by sustainability, we mean social sustainability, but also environmental sustainability. So we are uh, facing uh, the challenge of organizing all events and uh, other uh, workshops. They must have a sustainable environmental impact. So for example, when you're organizing catering, you must uh, avoid using plastic bottles. For example, I'm seeing many right now or uh, this is a topic I've talked about many times it's also a matter of the culture of the country the hosting country if you go in northern Europe the concept of a glass uh, water container is uh, very sustainable and it has a very low impact is, uh, is a pra good practice which is uh, very commonly uh, used in meetings but outside of Northern Europe, for example, in Italy, you will always find a plastic bottle because it is considered more uh, hygienic. But this is, uh, environmentally speaking, it's not sustainable. Look at our table. At the end of a two-day meeting, we will have produced a, uh, an incredible amount of plastic bottles, so it's, an, it's a noticeable impact. And so this environmental sustainability aspect must be taken into account. Can we try to go back to the page with the link and link? Click on the link. Okay, we're we're late. Okay, then let's just uh, just let's move on. No, we can't click on the link because I wanted to show you at least all the various. Um, sections that are taken in considerations when so this for example is the Copenhagen event it's just an example so for each event I am uh, compiling these uh, these small charts after the after the meeting so Copenhagen was a wonderful meeting because they were they were they had a green light on every single uh, voice and uh, Phil comes is now very good uh, at organizing sustainable events, but everything was in line. So hotel meeting rooms, restaurants, working documents, every single thing that was used during the meeting was perfectly uh, compatible with our indications. So at the end of the day, the Copenhagen event was a totally accessible event, and very often we cannot reach these accessibility levels. In fact, if you look at the key uh, legend in the top, right corner you can see correct wrong partially correct because some things are not completely wrong if compared to the parameters that we have decided but they're not all, not even correct so when you have to give a final judgment you do take in consideration these aspects but Copenhagen was uh, actually perfect completely perfect these are the keywords 
that I use and uh, have used in during our journey together from the beginning of the project, the Open Corporation project, and which have led us here. So I thank you, and for every qu any question, I'm here.